This is the second new venue of the year for round five, the brand new Miller Motorsport Park just outside Salt Lake City in Utah. The facility is still being completed, but most of the key areas have been finished. And with temperatures at well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, it was going to be a hot challenge for everyone. was a hot affair in heat as well as speed. In GT2, Mike Rockenfeller went second fastest in the Alex Joe Porsche, but later was bumped to the back of the grid after the technical inspection found the ride height was too low, possibly caused by low temperatures. The class pole was set by the returning Jamie Mello in the Risi Ferrari 430. The car has been mega quick this season, but luck has gone against a class win so far. It's a very nice track for, for our car, especially in fast part and uh, change direction. Our car is very good, and uh, the team has done a very good job. Uh, the car is very, very good over the, the, the bumps, over the curbs, uh, everywhere. So I need just to, to concentrate to, to get a clean lap, and that's it. But there was problems. After the warm-up session, more than the one permitted tyre had to be changed and the Ferrari was also sent to the back of the grid. Originally the third fastest, current class champions Pat Long and Jörg Bergmeister, who won the last round, were promoted onto the GT2 pole and obviously delighted to be so. Corvette team were not so delighted with the weekend so far. The sister four car was eclipsed by Johnny O'Connell in the three car during qualifying, who was third fastest in GT1. The recent performance adjustments with extra weight and smaller air restrictors seem to be taking their toll. That's everything we got. That is as pushing as bloody hard as we can. I mean, and you know, I mean, shoot, Ron fell off twice the, the session before. I fell off on my in lap. I mean, it is, we are. You know, we're on the dagger, and, uh, you know, that is as fast as we can go. So we're pushing as hard as we can, and, uh, it, uh, you know, I mean, and, you know, I mean, our cars are close. We got, you know, maybe a little bit, you know, better lap in today. And, you know, I really love this place. This is one of the most fun race tracks I think we have in the country now. So uh, I'm enjoying it, and, uh, you know, uh, we, we do what we can with the package we got. Class winners at the last round, Aston Martin went 1-2 in class with the 009 car, the slightly slower of the pair. But in the 009 car, Thomas Enger qualified this time and comfortably set pole after completing just two flying laps and then returning to the pit lane. It suits our tires, it suits our car. This track is more or less, uh, I, I guess, better than, for sure it's better than uh, last race in Lime Rock, where the track was very narrow, very bumpy and very slow. But uh, it's really a shame that uh, it's not the real competition with the Corvettes because they suddenly get, uh, they suddenly went eight tenths, one second slower uh, in a real qualifying than in the practice before qualifying. So it's it's shame, but okay. What we can do at least, uh, we have both cars in the front of the row, on front row, and uh, I hope uh, we just we just we are we will be there at the end of the race. P2 class championship leaders Clint Field and Liz Halliday knew that they'd be very likely to be overshadowed again this weekend, but that won't stop them trying. The Penske Porsche Spiders had been able to test here before the race weekend and had a lot of problems then, which they've corrected before their return, and it showed. They were very quick, which came as no surprise to anyone, and it was just a case of which car would be the faster of the two, and that honor fell to Lucas Law who was just a tenth faster than teammate Timo Bernhard, but knowing that it would be a lot harder to take the overall win now that Audi had returned with their new P1 prototype car. We said uh, if we can have one overall win in the season, that's nice. So we, with Penske and Porsche, have this in the pocket already. And now we focus completely on the championship because we want to win the team championship and 1-2 in the LMP2. 
and take the manufacturer championship home for Porsche and also for Michelin. This is now the focus. And uh, whenever we have a good race and maybe they have some problems, you never know. In the P1 class, Highcraft Racing were back again with their bright yellow blue Lola. Andy Wallace was fifth fastest in the P1 class, which was the best that they could realistically hope for. The Dyson team was so far having a less problematic weekend, with Guy Smith class fourth and James Weaver third, 0.9 of a second off the pole time. We have the handling on the car going very well. The, uh, we're, we're, we're a bit down, I think, on power uh, compared to the Audi right now. But uh, you know, we'll, just, we'll just keep working at it. The boys at AER are doing a very good job, and they're, you know, they're trying to get us up there as well. But uh, I think we have a very good package for the race. You know, I, I think that our tire wear, you know, hopefully, will be a little bit better. But uh, we'll, we'll see soon. At the first round of the year at Sebring, Audi gave its pair of R10 diesel prototypes their debut. Now, after missing four rounds, Audi Sport North America bring the pair back for the rest of the season. Alan McNish and Ronaldo Capello have driven the last three rounds with an R8, but now have the R10 to continue their championship quest. Also back for the rest of the series are last year's champion Frank Beeler and Emmanuel Piro, who won't be in championship contention but still out for wins. Frank Beeler went two tenths faster than Alan McNish to set the class and overall pole. As you said, it's a kind of a comeback. We did not, well, we missed the last two rounds. And uh, it's the first race with the TDI and the CR10. So uh, all together. Back with my guys from last year, you know, and uh, all together uh, being on pole in the first qualifying session, it's a great feeling. Race day and the air temperature was almost 105 degrees with a breeze blowing that felt like standing in front of a hairdryer. Returning back to drive the number 12 auto car car this weekend is Brian Wilman, who is enjoying the new track. Very challenging track, very interesting. If you look at a map, you tend to look and go, ah, the front straightaway is 3,500 feet long. Oh my, this is all about straightaways. Uh -uh. This is like three series points tied together with a straightaway. Uh, amazing racetrack. You know, I've struggled here a little bit. I struggle everywhere, right? I think certainly internally there's always competition. That's one of the good thing about Audi Sport is they allow the two cars to race. Uh, we have been told, obviously, as we are every time, and as I think is every sensible team, not to take each other off. But uh, I do think the competition from Porsche and also from Dyson is going to intensify for the rest of the year. So we're certainly going to have to be on our best behaviour. Well, we started off pretty badly, had, had a lot of bad luck, uh, but uh, Lime Rock, oh, already in mid-Ohio, were really, uh, really good. Had some bad luck there as well, uh, but then Lime Rock. I hope was a turnaround and we can continue like in Lambra. It's very different. I've not not come to a track like this before. I mean, it, I mean, out here in the heat, it kind of gives you that Bahrain type feel. But uh, the track is very different to, to any other circuit I've been on. Very difficult, um, very technical, and it takes takes some time to learn. That's for sure. The race start was set for 6 p.m. to hopefully allow for a lower temperature. And with the track at 128 degrees and the air at 103, it was a wise move, as a little cloud cover masks the searing sunshine, but it will still be hard on the cars, drivers, and especially the tyres. Two hours and 45 minutes of racing ahead at round five of the American Le Mans series on this brand new circuit near Salt Lake City in Utah. And in blazing heat, it's going to be a long, hard race for everyone as Frank Beeler leads away from the start line and onto the formation lap. Two Audis and a Dyson lead away two Porsches, all capable of the overall win. Although on pace and fuel economy, it should be the Audis that come out the best. And have Corvette got anything in hand for the Aston Martins? We're about to find out all of those answers. 
So away we go then. We're just about ready to get the green flag. We've got it now. Two hours and 45 minutes, 103 degrees. The air temperature, it's Frank Bieler and Alan McNish side by side into turn one. This very long start straight. And behind them, James Weaver looking for a way through with the Dyson car. But round the outside, it's still the two Audis. And slotting into the lead is Frank Bieler. He hasn't raced in the American Le Mans series since Sebring. And they're both back in these new cars on a brand new circuit as we look from second place on board as Bieler just catches it on turn three, runs wide. And Alan McNish and also James Weaver nip up to take first and second place away from him. So Frank Bieler, he's down to third place. The two Penske Porsches are behind as Alan McNish sprints away and has already pulled out a bit of a gap over James Weaver. Frank Bieler will be uh, most displeased with himself. And, uh, well, everybody's had trouble learning this track. It's been very difficult for them to find their braking and apex markers. And uh, a lot of the corners look very similar. So it's taken them a while to settle down, but that was... Uh, just very a little miss here we go then here's a replay frank beeler just goes into the turn and whether he got a bit of understeer i don't know but he just ran wide it's not exactly a wide circuit but the dust and the stones are right there off the edge of the curb and it was just enough to slow him down and uh, he needs to clean those tires up now while well, he looks to be fighting back because he's closing on the back of james weaver alan mcnish is doing his best to disappear off into the distance on this brand new circuit we are about 25 minutes drive from Salt Lake City and uh, surrounded by mountains, very flat, very arid, and they've done an incredible amount of work to build this circuit. And uh, everybody is raving about it. Still a lot of facilities to be built and uh, a little bit of grass, I think, to be uh, planted and nurtured. But otherwise, the facilities are absolutely stunning. But uh, Frank Bieler being caught now, I think, by the Penske Porsche of Sasha Masson in the number six car. Roman Dumas is in fifth place. Sasha Masson leading the P2 class. And Guy Smith in the number 20 Dyson is currently in sixth place. But Sasha Masson it is that leads the two Penske Porsche RS Spiders. On board with... Roman Dumas, fifth overall, second in the P2 class. And uh, although they're currently being led in the championship by Clint Fields and Liz Halliday, drivers of the 37 Intersport car, who really are being outpaced by these now. But the fact that they got two wins earlier on in the season has helped them to stay in the championship points. And there is the Risi Competizione Ferrari 430 Berlinetta. Uh, Hayme Mello, who's back this weekend, he started Class P8, he's now Class P6 at the minute. They flat spotted the tyres in the warm-up session, and you're only allowed to change one of those tyres, so that uh, automatically sent him to the back of the pack. Uh, Johannes van Overbeck currently second, sorry, currently third in Class Mike Rockefeller, who also started from the back of the grid because the ride height was found to be too low. They thought that was because the air temperatures uh, had affected the air pressures in the tyres and that meant that the car was slightly lower uh, but uh, he just glides through to take third place away from uh, Johannes van Overbeck who is the current GT2 class leader on uh, championship points and Amy Mello just goes straight through as well made very easy pickings of that and that Ferrari was the one that we saw Racing at Lime Rock, its sister car was destroyed in that incident with Tony Valanda and uh, the BK Motorsports car, but that car was the one that we saw Mark Genet have a few dramas in. And there is a brand new car on its way for, uh, we think, round six at uh, Portland. Ferrari have flown a brand new car out for the team to use. Uh, here's the Corvettes. Normally we'd be saying this is first and second in GT1, but we're saying this is third and fourth, and they are quite a way back from the Aston Martins. We have got the number three car leading the number four car at the moment as we switch to the front. And uh, Frank Bieler has got past James Weaver. And Sasha Masson is now starting to close on the back of James Weaver. Roman Dumas, second in P2, but fifth overall. And Guy Smith, just in the second of the blue and white Lolas. New cars for the Dyson team this year are currently in sixth place. We're on board with Roman Dumas in fifth overall. 
won the last round. Had some great drives. We've seen some great rivalry between the two cars in the team. They very much work together as a team, but also they are allowed to race between each other. We've seen a bit of paint swapping going on between them. Mid-Ohio comes to mind. We saw a few flakes of paint shaved away from both cars there. But Roman Dumas continues on at the moment. A bit of cloud continuing to come on, and that's just taking the uh, searing heat away from uh, this track. And a big track it is as well. The longest permanent circuit in North America now. And it has been beautifully designed. The surface, the guys were saying normally when you get a brand new asphalt circus, uh, surface, it tends to be sealed, but this one hasn't been so. And uh, it's not too abrasive. The Risi Ferrari has touched with Frank Bieler. And Frank Bieler was looking for a way through as uh, we go on board the other oh, the other Audi. Frank Bieler was looking for a way through and the Ferrari just didn't let it happen at all. And Frank Bieler has gone off and disaster for him and loses positions. Just looking to see where he is and there's the Penske Porsche just coming up through now. And a lot of dirt on those tyres, the stones coming out from underneath as well and he gets passed by Sasha Massen. So he goes down to fourth place. Frank Bieler down to fourth place. And that's the view from the Paynos Aspirante looking ahead at those uh, cars. And uh, Frank Bieler tries to come back at Sasha Massen and goes wide again, keeps it on the circuit. And surely Roman Dumas is just going to nip through. Oh, no, he holds him off. Frank holds him off, but he's got still alongside. No, Roman's going to do it this time, yet yeah, just gets the right line. His tyres were just offering up a little bit more grip. And now the Audi is being chased by Guy Smith. And that would have fired Guy Smith up to take that position if he can. And he goes through. Nice move. And does make it stick. And Frank Bieler will be absolutely devastated with that. And uh, that really is the third mistake that we've seen from him. So uh, still, still going. But uh, it's going to take him a little while to get those uh, tyres cleaned up. And he's very dusty here. So at the moment, the Paynos is proving difficult for the Alex Joe Porsche to get past, and there is the newer breed of Porsche. Sasha Masson has come in for a very early stop. Vincent says change tires. And they are going for tires as well as fuel. And uh, they obviously last-minute decision to change tires. Uh, but they've come in early to try and get away from the Dyson cars. The idea is to give Sasha Masson a different track space and uh, then maybe he can uh, do something about it as the race unfolds. So an early stop for Sasha Masson, he'll stay in. Lucas Law will take over later on in this race for him. GT2 class, and this is Jamie Mello looking for a way past Pat Long in the 31 Peterson White Lightning car, and he does it. He's got a lot of speed in that car. That car has just been stunning all weekend. We're on board with Pat Long, who goes down to second place now. Pat Long, the third driver in the Penske Porsche team for the longer races. He'll be back on duty with them for the uh, Petit Le Mans at Road Atlanta, which is round nine of the series, and quite a few months away now. But gone down to second place, and that Ferrari is just pulling away. And Stefan Sarazin is in second place in the GT1 class ahead of Oliver Gavin, who pulls out to have a look on the inside. And I think Saracen just went slightly offline, and uh, Oli Gavin got the break he was looking for, which was to get past, and he did, and moves up to second straight place in speed, class. Okay. He's got great straightaway speed. He radio in, his tires are gone. So let's go for the next one. Good job. Comfy where call that team. Talking to Ollie Gavin, who gets ahead and has pulled away a little bit from that 009 car, who we heard the team saying his tyres are uh, well off now, so not able to uh, keep up with Ollie Gavin, but was able to keep ahead of him for quite some time. And ahead of this battle is the class leader, Darren Turner, some 17 seconds away, and that is an awful lot of time for uh, Ollie Gavin to try and break down but you can guarantee that he will do the very same if given half the opportunity to. Gets past the number 50 Paynos, David Brabham, and Scott Maxwell driving that car. One. And changeover. 
as Roman Dumas gets out. Timo Bernhard gets in to take over. Fuel going on. Tyres are ready to go. They can't start on the tyres or do anything else to the car while the fuel's going in, but uh, somebody is allowed to assist the drivers. And in these cars, it tends to be the driver getting out. So the harness is strapped in. Communications are plugged in. And uh, Roman gets out of the way. And there is Sasha Masson coming through. Tyres are done. And away goes Timo Bernhard. And a change for the number two car as well. Alan McNish handing over to Dindo Capello. And uh, Olivier Beretta is now taking over control of the number four Corvette, which was second in place. And this is uh, Dindo Capello looking at the number six car of Sasha Masson. And uh, different classes, but all going for the overall win. for the Audi, of course, is that it has fresh tyres. Sasha Masson took the gamble of making an earlier stop, but uh, it's got him out in front at the moment of that uh, number two Audi. But we're going to have to see how the pit stops will shake that out a little bit later on. Changeover in the number one car in the pit lane. Frank Fieler gets out. And Emmanuel Pirro gets in. These two won the championship last year. They were racing for the champion Audi team in the R8. As Sasha Masson goes through, flying through on this very long straight. And takes over the overall lead. And still retains the lead of the GT2 class. And Diesel flowing into that Audi. Emmanuel Pirro gets himself in. Tires to go on. And then very shortly, he'll be back out. Onto the race track for his first drop and go. Watch for my hand signal. Round five of the American Le Mans series at Miller Motorsports Park, just outside Salt Lake City in Utah. And Roman Dumas has just made a pit stop, has lost the overall lead, but comes back out onto the track ahead of his teammate and retains the P2 class lead. So Roman Dumas has got to get his tyres up at temperature. Lucas Law looking very handy now, but to remember his tyres are bedded in and up to temperature, he's completely up to speed. And I think we're gonna see a change in order here as Lucas Law gets it right, goes up the inside, and Roman Dumas does the right thing and gives him plenty of room. The sun is starting to drop in the sky now. We're gonna finish this just as the skies start to darken, but uh, still some way to go, and it's still stalemate in GT1 with the 009, Aston Martin leading the Corvettes. Corvettes are third and fourth in class. Andrea Bertini still leading Olivier Beretta in that car. Thomas Enger and Darren Turner. Well, that is the number seven car that's just gone wide there. And uh, a mistake from Roman Dumas. Uh, quite unusual as well, he's struggling. With that car, you're just seeing him really fighting that car then into the turn. A bit of dust on those tyres, so it will take him a while to clean them up. And a spin for the Dyson car again. Butch Leitzinger in problems again. And. Uh, the track is degrading slightly. We are getting a lot of build-up off the line of uh, the rubber marbles and whether he just got offline and uh, ended up spinning it round. I don't know, we didn't quite see how that started. And Roman Dumas is in the pit lane. There is problems with that Porsche. And very slowly it seems to be going as well. The engine racing there, and is it a throttle problem? The front cover is coming off and it looks like the rear cover is coming off as well. And problems for the Penske Porsche team. And look at those tyres. You can see how much those tyres are rippled on the top. And that is just where um, the tyres have picked up rubber balls from the side of the track. And 
that's what causes so many handling problems for these guys. And pickup seems to be a real problem here. Team looking at this car. And he was second in the P2 class. Third in class was the Intersport car, which was quite a few laps down. But the longer this car stays in the pit lane, the more chance the Intersport team have of uh, making up some ground. Liz Halliday is in the Intersport car at the moment, but it'll be some time before she comes in contention for the place. And out goes Chris Dyson. Oops, stalls it. And gets away. In the 20 car, having taking on fuel. And through goes Emmanuel Pillow in the Audi R10 coming up behind Lucas Law and this is a battle for second overall they're in different classes Lucas Law leads the P2 class but now goes down to third place overall and beautifully executed move from Emmanuel Piro and carried the speed down the straight and the cars really these diesels really do have the torque to get them out of the corner and the other cars seem to stay right with them but they just can't keep up with them as they exit the turns. Just the grunt from the diesel kicks in. And uh, Roman Dumas has got going again, but now he's very slowly coming down the start straight. And that car is struggling as he comes down alongside as, well, he pulls off into the pit exit, which uh, is not the best of places to stop, but that uh, spider has come to a complete standstill. team talking to him and to each other the yellow flags are out full course caution the uh, race director has had no choice they need to move that car out of the way Roman Dumas has been trying to start it and can't and there we see the other Penske Porsche RS Spider takes around about 140 man hours to build one of their engines and uh, the stricken car Roman Dumas still at the side of the track and uh, now has been towed away and the safety car is coming into the pit lane this lap we're going to get a green flag and another car into the pit lane as well and away we go and it's the Audi that streaks away as he gets the green flag from Dennis and it's the number one car the number two car is missing and we think maybe it has gone into the pit lane but the number one car of Emmanuel Piro leads with Lucas Law second overall and leading the P2 class. So is it a fuel problem? It's a puncture. They've got a puncture in the number two car. So changing all four tires. And this obviously wasn't expected, but what bitter disappointment for the two car as new tires go on and was leading overall and on for the fifth win of the year. And that looks as if it's gone now as Audi goes into the pit lane. And Emmanuel Pura will be bitterly disappointed. And so too, Alan McNish, who's the other side of the pit wall. So now gets back out onto the track and uh, will get everything back up to speed again and has dropped down in the order. And here's a replay. And uh, you can see rubber coming off the back of the cars there. They're squirming around trying to get rid of the clumps of rubber that have just attached themselves to the tires and everybody having that sort of problem it seems to be a real problem here but Lucas Law the chase is on and he's got right up again with uh, the number one Audi and this is the battle for the race lead at the moment it is being held by the Audi these two leaders in their respective classes as well we have a P2 car chasing a P1 car. And Lucas Law looking very handy as well. And staying on the back of Emmanuel Piro. And uh, slightly bigger tyres on the P1 car, which of course is a little bit more of an advantage grip-wise and speed-wise. But it also means that maybe he's got a lot more pickup on those uh, rubber marbles on those tyres. And it might just be that Lucas Law's tyres are just a little bit better and he's certainly allowing him to be very racy. And uh, the darkness starts to set in. It's not going to be completely dark when the chequered flag falls. But it is starting to dim now. Temperatures have dropped considerably, but it is still in the 90s. 
And Lucas Law closes right up to the back of the Audi, but as soon as the throttles push down on the Audi, the grunt just pulls him out of the corners very nicely. But Lucas Law is not giving him any space whatsoever. It doesn't matter, though, because the chequered flag has been shown for the Audi, and it's another win. The Penske Porsche wins the class second overall as well, and a great chase to the chequered flag all the way. Another win for Audi, but this time it's the number one car that takes the spoils. Lucas Law finishes second overall and wins the P2 class. Aston Martin take their second win in a row in GT1, and this time it's Thomas Enger and Darren Turner. In GT2, Mika Salo and Jamie Mello finally get a win for the Risi Ferrari. A perfect way for last year's champions to return to the series full-time with a win. And uh, Dindo Capello gets out, and big congratulations from Lucas Law. They thoroughly enjoyed that very close race with each other, no doubt about it. It feels really, really good because we had a, a tough beginning of the race. Um, we've been lucky with, I mean, our teammates have been very unlucky with the puncture. This is a big thread in a circuit with so many stones. I can only say I enjoyed very much the race. It was very, very difficult, especially at the beginning. The car was sliding a lot and then slowly it was picking up more and more grip. And the last few laps were just so difficult. I had so much pick up. I thank God I'm not a junior because it was really difficult to pick, to keep it on the road. I want to thank Audi to, you know, give us such a good car and I'm really happy that we could uh, work our, our way through. Brilliant race, very, very close at the end. Fabulous stuff. Yeah, it was a really close race. <laughs> <laughs> It was a good battle with Emmanuel. After the safety car, I had so much pickup on the tires. I thought something is broken on the car. I never felt it that much pickup. You know, I had big vibrations and so on. And then they said, ah, probably it's just pickup. Try to clean the tires. And it took three or four laps. And also Emmanuel had problems. Uh, I saw him in front of me. He was sideways once, and I nearly could overtake him. But then at the end, uh, we had a little bit more power down the straightaway, so but it was a good fight. I'm happy that uh, we won the race, and thanks to all everybody. The first time this year that the number two car didn't win the P1 class, but they still lead on points in the P2 class. Clint Field and Liz Halliday lead by just one point. After a difficult weekend, the Ollies lead GT1 by eight points. Johannes van Overbeck finished third in the GT2 class and retains the points lead. Five rounds completed, the halfway point reached, and the championships are taking shape now. There's just one week before the next race as everyone makes their way to Portland, Oregon, which will be another close battle in all of the classes.